Hello chess friends! Today I will be discussing the following question. Is the game of chess nearly solved? Are the world's top computer chess programs close to totally mastering the game? Well it's hard to know for sure, since today's top chess engines are now undeniably the strongest chess players in the history of the game, we have no good way to fully probe any weaknesses they might have, as it's becoming increasingly rare that they even beat one another at tournament time controls. But we do have some clues at our disposal. There is some data that can help give us an idea of just how much stronger these chess engines can possibly get before they have completely mastered the game of chess. But before I delve into that, I want to talk a little bit about ELO ratings. If you ask the average chess player, what do you think is the highest possible ELO rating? Like if God played chess? They might tell you that such a player would have an infinite rating. But this is not the case. There is a maximum ELO rating that it is possible to attain. The reason for this is that ELO ratings are a linear measurement of chess performance relative to other players which does not translate to a linear measurement of chess ability. One's chess ability, that is, their knowledge of the game, their calculating skill, these things will need to increase exponentially in order to keep pace with a linear rise in ELO rating. For example, a player with an ELO rating of 1000 who wants to increase his rating by 300 points to achieve a rating of 1300 is going to have a much easier time and much less to learn than a player who is rated 2200 and wants to become a 2500 rated player. As one's ELO rating climbs, it becomes harder and harder to defeat opponents who are rated, for example, 200 points lower than you because those opponents are making fewer and fewer mistakes. And remember, an ELO rating difference is based on the percentage of time you can beat a lower rated player, which is dependent on the percentage of time that lower rated player is making mistakes. So even if you get to the point where you have achieved flawless play, if you have an opponent who is making on average, let's say one losing move out of every 20 when under maximum pressure, then that puts an upper limit on the percentage of games you can win. Because in that scenario, it is not statistically unlikely for that player to go a whole game without making a single losing move. So you, the perfect player, playing strongly, exerting maximum pressure on your opponent, will be just waiting around for your opponent to make a mistake, which you will then punish flawlessly and win by force, but you cannot win until that happens. So essentially, it's your lower rated opponents who are determining how high your perfect rating can be by how often they make mistakes, allowing you to win. So the real question, most pertinent to determining the maximum possible chess rating is this. How often would the top engines of today make losing mistakes against a perfect player who is exerting maximum pressure on their position? So our first step in addressing this question will be to consider the following graph. This graph shows the percentage of games that end in a draw played between chess engines of similar ratings for each rating level. So as we go one unit to the right, the ratings of the competing programs go up by 50 points, and we can see that the percentage of draws indicated by the vertical column is increasing at what looks like pretty much a linear rate. Looks like a straight line. If it were to continue to follow its trajectory as the strength of chess programs continues to increase in the future, if we extrapolate like so, it looks like we're headed toward a 100% drawing rate when chess engines have attained an ELO rating of around 3700. But what does a 100% draw rate even mean? Does it prove that perfect play has been achieved? Well, not necessarily, but it does offer compelling evidence. Here's why. If two computer programs are drawing in every single game, yet are both still making objectively losing mistakes every once in a while, eventually one of those mistakes is bound to fall within the range of moves that the opponent is able to punish effectively, even if just by chance. For example, suppose one chess engine makes a game losing mistake, which neither player realizes is a mistake at the moment it is played. There is a chance that the engine with a now winning position will just happen to find the correct winning line just by playing strong, sensible moves, and then maybe five or six moves down the road, it might become apparent to both players that one side now has a winning position. Because this scenario should statistically play out eventually, we can say with confidence that any pair of strong chess players 
who always draw against each other 100% of the time no matter how many games are played, those players have most likely achieved virtually flawless play. Now there are some obvious caveats to this. The players would have to vary their opening sufficiently so that they are not getting too many repeated games with very similar types of positions or even identical moves. And they must choose openings conducive to a complex middle game at least some of the time. You know, for example, playing perfectly in the Petrov defense is not typically going to be as difficult as playing perfectly in the Sicilian defense. So the games would need to consist of sufficiently aggressive, imbalanced, and complex chess. Now let's revisit this graph. Is this an accurate extrapolation? It does seem a little hard to believe that the world's top chess programs are now less than 100 rating points from absolute chess perfection. If we look at the top of the graph, at the data points corresponding with the draw rates of chess engines rated 3550 and 3600, we see some ambiguity. The 3550 point makes it look like the slope of the graph is getting a bit steeper, while the 3600 point makes it look like it's tapering off a bit. This variation is probably due to the relatively low sample size of the computer games used to generate this data, only about 40 games for each data point. If we assume that the 3550 point is a bit of an outlier due to the expected margin of error and look only at the 3600 point, we could end up with a graph that looks something like this, converging on a maximum rating of 3900. This maximum possible rating seems a bit more plausible, being 300 points higher than the ratings of the top computer programs today, but if 3900 still seems a bit conservative to you, let me show you this breakdown of the expected accuracy and score of the lower rating levels when playing against our theoretically perfect 3900 rated chess program. So in this chart, you see the expected score out of 100 games for each rating level. On the far right, you'll see exactly how this score is achieved. And you'll notice that all points scored for the lower rated programs come from draws since it is obviously not possible to ever score a win against a flawless opponent. In the middle column, you'll see how often on average the lower rated players need to make a game losing error in order to generate these results. I used 50 moves as the average length of a game, by the way, or to put it more accurately, the average number of moves it takes for a mistake to be made in those games where a mistake is made. So according to this chart, Today's highest rated chess programs, which are rated around 3600, would be expected to make an average of one fatal error every 43 moves against our perfect player, which would result in an average of 70 out of 100 games being lost with 30 draws. So what do you think? Do you think programs like Stockfish and Leela Chess Zero would make losing moves at this rate? You'll notice at the bottom of the chart that I've included the top rating of Magnus Carlsen. His expected score against our flawless 3900 rated player would be less than 1%, requiring him to make one fatal mistake in about every 10 moves on average. And remember, this is when put under maximum pressure by the strongest possible opponent. His accuracy against other human opponents is obviously much greater than this, since it is known that the weaker your opponent is, the easier it is to play accurate moves. So what do you think? If Magnus played God, would you expect about one out of every 10 of his moves to be game losing errors? Now let's look at a couple of alternative charts. Since the relative performance data will remain the same as you go up or down by 100 ELO points, we can simply shift the ELO ratings in the far left column to see what our performance data would look like for different values for our highest possible chess rating. Here we have our original projection of 3700 as the highest possible rating. In this scenario, Magnus Carlsen would need to make a losing mistake about once every 15 moves on average, and would actually be expected to score three draws out of every 100 games, with 97 losses against the flawless opponent. Is this plausible? Well, there are some variables I should discuss at this point. ELO ratings are based on probabilities of winning, based on ability to play chess, but not necessarily on ability to have perfect knowledge about your opponent. That is, if you had perfect knowledge about the inner workings of your opponent's mind and you could tailor your play to bring about specific positions where you knew your opponent would make a mistake, this would invalidate a lot of the statistical variability which is necessary for these ELO ratings to work. 
So I think we have to say that these statistics are most valid when the players know nothing about each other before the game starts. You know, if you actually played God, who had perfect knowledge of how your mind worked, you as a human would certainly never get a draw. And I doubt that even today's top chess programs could get a single draw either, since God would have perfect knowledge of their exact programming and would know all the exact positions in which they would make an error. So we are really only interested in perfect chess knowledge, but not perfect knowledge of one's opponent. So I'll show you a couple more charts. Here we have 4500 as our upper rating limit. In this situation, today's top chess programs should make a game losing mistake once about every 13 moves on average in order to give the perfect player its required winning rate. Now this does seem like a lot. We should keep in mind that in a lot of chess positions, finding a good move does not require anywhere near complete and perfect knowledge of the game. An extreme example is when your opponent captures your queen with his queen. Programs like Stockfish are able to perform a selective search of more than 50 moves deep. And the deeper you search, the more unlikely it becomes that you will need to search any deeper to avoid making a mistake. If a move looks okay to Stockfish after calculating 10 minutes at 10 billion positions per second, it's probably going to still look okay after 20 minutes, 20 hours, or even an infinite amount of calculating time. Not always, but most of the time. So let me show you one more interesting chart which shows the accuracy breakdown as you approach a theoretical maximum rating of 3,900. You can see here that in order to achieve the expected score, a 3,800 rated player would need to make a mistake only once out of 153 moves on average. And as your rating increased towards the max of 3,900, you'll see that your mistakes must become exponentially more rare. By the time you reach a rating of 3,894, only six points away from chess perfection, you are making an error in only one out of 2,500 moves on average. So I hope you found this analysis interesting. I don't think it's possible to predict exactly what the highest possible chess rating is. And obviously there is some rating inflation that happens that will affect what the number will eventually be. The projections I've shown you here now are based on current ratings and do not take into account any rating inflation in the future. So let me know in the comments what you think the maximum possible chess rating is, how long you think it will be before it's ever achieved by a computer program, if ever, and thanks for watching.